That's right. Guess what? It's that time of the week, your month. It's the highlight of your wow, you, life. You had to go up there. It is, I because I don't, I can't keep track of time anymore. That's right. It's our reviews will kill you. Crossed over with Giga Blast O two, dropping all that fun, you know, entertainment, monsters, aliens, movie stuff. You name it, we do it. That's right. That's what we're doing today. How you doing, my man? You know what? It's been going good. I've, I've moved into this brand new apartment, so I got a brand new layout, and I also got another monitor to add on to the collection of things to put behind me. We're growing, people. <laughs> oh We're my growing. gosh. I didn't realize that that was a picture of uh, Godzilla X Kong behind you. That's awesome. Maybe you yeah, can get like moving ones sweet. and dancing and I tried to find that so much. I might get uh I might get somebody to animate it for me or something like that and just like have Godzilla Kong doing a dance behind me or something like that. Like that'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty hilarious. I, I think that's that sounds like good stuff in the future. So Very this is stuff. just like the Godzilla X Kong slash Monsterverse chill. We're just gonna talk some there were some updates and we wanted to catch everybody up on it. Some some good news, some bad news, some news in the middle. You know, we'll we'll kind of yeah. weigh each one as we see them. So um, I know you know a little bit about these, but let's get started with the first article that we're going to go into here. I am uh, I'm not I don't think I'm feeling this one. Adam Wingard not returning for Godzilla X Kong. Wingard directed and co-wrote Legendary. He did two of them, right? And he made $564 million, but he's not coming back after we did a whole episode on what he was going to do for the third one. What are we going to do? Mm. Yeah, no, that was when I heard the news and my, my heart sank for a moment because it's like, okay, Adam Wingard's out, but he's not like completely out after like looking back in it more and more. Think of it more of he is no longer the conductor. He is now just uh, overseeing because there is rumor that he will still be guiding and, and sort of overseeing to make sure that it's kind of following. But the only problem with Adam Wingard stepping out is is the next director going to try to imitate what he's doing or are they going to go a complete different direction? Because we know that there are a few people out there in the MonsterVerse who are scared of a theme being changed. But if you go back and watch the show a series, I mean, there's night and day changes between the directors and, and the writing team and stuff like that. So I don't have a huge necessary problem about Adam Wingard stepping out. I have a problem more so about what I've heard about who's writing Oh. The um the next Godzilla X Kong script. Do you know anything about him? I do, but let's before we get there, let's let's uh talk a little bit more about Wingar because yes, um I believe the reason he stepped out it wasn't anything controversial or anything like that. It was just simply that he is um he's uh working on another project of his. I think it's a horror movie with a twenty four called Onslaught. Yeah, you're exactly um, right. So, so I'll be sure to check that out because after the after the last two entries with the uh, MonsterVerse, I haven't really paid attention to Adam Wingard as a director as much. Mm -hmm. um, but I know, I think prior to him joining the MonsterVerse, he had some experience with horror movies before. So I ought to give them a look into it. And I'll be very excited to see what comes out for his um, brand new movie. I definitely, like, for me, A24... I really like them as a studio. Some people may find them like kind of controversial because they pick up like oddball movies. But as a whole, like I'm, I just I'm glad that A24 exists because they they're allowing people to make these smaller mid budget movies that don't have to do as well, and you can keep making like real weird stuff. I feel like Lamb was an A24 movie and Hereditary and like the, all those type movies, which I I really. I'm not going to say I like Lamb, but I can appreciate why people are putting out these wacky movies. I think they even do it. That's like all the Ari Aster movies, right? Um, Midsommar and uh, what was the other one that I didn't see? The one with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Bo is Afraid. I didn't see that one. But if it says A24, I'm usually going to see it So uh, at some point. So I'm interested in in uh in them doing this and it's just it's a it's a shooting issue really uh like the scheduling just isn't gonna line up which, which right. to me is actually good news on some level because 
to me, that means that they're excited about the next installment because this one did so well and they just want to get it out earlier. Uh, because it, I want to tie this back to what happened in Memorial Day weekend with Furiosa. The difference between Furiosa coming out, it's a, it's a nine-year window between Fury Road and Furiosa, and all three Mad Maxes came out within a six-year window. So you can lose that audience attention if you squander it. You know, you don't want to overdo it like the Marvel Universe has done recently. But I think right. by, you know, you get, you get a, a movie out every two to three years isn't a bad schedule, right? So yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're, you know, the Monsterverse movies are, are kind of doing it right. So you're not like overwhelmed. People seem to really, you know, a Kong, a Godzilla versus Kong resonated with people, right? And then this one did... It's the best MonsterVerse movie financially so far. And I like them. Some people don't like these movies. But I think if you're a fan of this stuff, you'll like it. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to see the director from Kong Skull Island come back. We talked a little bit about him before. But I don't right. I don't know what that guy's doing. I don't know who he, who he got, man. But he's not doing much of anything in hollywood at this you, point you know it's funny because it, it kind of reminds me of like toby mcguire for example and and, and there was another actor who was who had the major role as darth helmet in space balls sometimes oh, they just kind of go out yeah they just kind of go out and they're just like vanish and then some odd years later they return and they're like oh they're right back to it well um, rick moranis had a reason i will say right no no bless his heart and it's like that's yeah, one of the guy. most unfortunate stories right there along with uh, brandon frazier it's yeah like, it, it's unfortunate some of these well talented actors going through those uh incidences um but as for adam wingard i wish him luck on his a24 film and as for the legendary thing i'm kind of mixed on on the whole idea they're excited that's good but are they excited for the right reason or money. are they excited more so for the money which we all know and agree is the most part or are they excited about the direction that um the story is taking the fact that they already have another writer that fast and uh that that's pretty good that that they already had that all figured out is good which i'm glad at now they didn't have a post credit scene because that was the one major issue I had with uh, Adam Wingard's movies is the fact that he wouldn't put a post credit scene because he wasn't really confident in the success of the films, mm -hmm. let alone to see if, if they would even reinstall for another uh, episode. But now it's really left left the fandom more worried now than than questioning what's going to happen next. Um because yeah, I'm. I have to say myself, I'm pretty nervous of where the MonsterVerse is going to head. Um, I know Adam said he wanted to focus on Godzilla, and and for the most part, I think that will be upheld. Mm -hmm. I still think it will be a Godzilla-driven story. Now, whether it takes a darker turn, uh, that part is unknown. Um, but there is a few theories out there that I'd like to address in this uh, little podcast and seeing if um, maybe we agree with them or not. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Um so the director of Kong Skull Island is Jordan Vote Roberts and or whatever, however you pronounce that guy's name. And um, yeah, I will be curious. Like I remember he was talking about Destroya, but I feel like because he aired that out publicly, maybe they won't want to go out on that uh path you know what i mean like b they would have to give him story writing credit which i don't know if that's a thing like are they g i think they'll pay him as a producer but i don't know if they'll pay him as that do you know what i mean right yeah yeah, yeah. so so i definitely want to rule out the fact that legendary might shed out any more money uh towards owning any more kaiju other than godzilla while while the inside fandom of me is going to be like, dang it. Uh, at the same time, I do want to welcome um, and invite newer monsters into the franchise. And I think that might be the direction taken. Um, if only we could just find out who's directing the film. Um, that would be some some more clarity for me. Personally, for me, I wish Michael Doherty might come back or even Gareth. I really wasn't disappointed with Gareth's work uh, with Godzilla. I just don't think he was really... Um, I, I just don't think 
he was really in it as much as the previous directors that we've had. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do respect him for what he's done. Plus the Mutos uh, were a pretty decent creation in my opinion. Um, But Michael Doherty, I believe would, would be able to secure that because even me and my dad were having that conversation. I think, um, I think Adam Wingard really knows how to work with Kong, work with some of the monsters and definitely the color and vibrancy of CGI and using it to its best advantage. Um, and I think Michael is really good with Godzilla. And I think King of the Monsters, despite what a lot of people say, is genuinely a good film that's for the fans. I just watched it uh, this weekend. And um, it's interesting. I think there's a couple of... There's things I really like about it and things I really dislike. And I think the mm-hmm. one thing that's... It's a pretty stark contrast between this... Between King of the Monsters and between Kong uh, or Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, is the perspective is always on the people on the ground. And it's it very rarely just on the monsters. Like occasionally it is, but but the majority of the perspective is from the ground level, which is okay. But I think you start to lose track of what is going on with the monsters. Whereas I feel like there was a concerted effort by Wingard in you know in this most recent movie to stay really focused on the monsters like there's parts where you have no idea what the humans are doing which i'm okay with some people aren't but i don't care like i even laughed because i was watching it and millie bobby brown bless her soul she she, i like her as an actress but there's a part where there's like a I, i think it's the the first time uh godzilla uses the 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 atomic uh blast like the uh the Mothra blast and her mouth is open as like an atomic blast and all the dust goes right in her mouth. Obviously it's CGI and she has no idea what's going on, but I was just like, sweetheart, close your mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny. She has like her mouth agape and I'm like, Oh my gosh, she's so young in that too. But I, I liked it. There are things just, it, 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 it the pacing's not great on the movie, but the, you can, that scene with Rodan could be one of the best oh scenes gosh. ever in any kaiju movie ever. I really, obviously, you like Rodan, or not, I mean, I like King Ghidorah's, obviously. I thought he was pretty awesome. And, like, all the Mothra stuff. Like, if you just, con- yeah, it's like any Godzilla movie. If you just consolidate the monster stuff, you have an amazing movie. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have, like, an extra hour of stupid human things. So <laughs> some of the human stuff's okay. Some of it, like I like the uh, Ken Watanabe when he's in the in the in the tent. Although I thought that was kind of annoying too. If I was Godzilla and I was you know injured by the oxygen destroyer and I'm in my own private temple, I would not want Ken Watanabe dropping off a nuclear bomb to make me feel better and destroying my <laughs> beautiful temple that I am relaxing in. That aside. <laughs> I think it's, I uh, you know, and they start introducing the Hollow Earth stuff, which is which is fine. Um, it's just it's a weirdly paced movie because there are some really awesomely intense scenes followed by like pictures of wolves. <laughs> that's, that's I was like, what am I watching here? So and the, and you know what the other last point I'll make about that movie, and and this is where I think uh, Wingard made a really smart move in in keeping the budget down on on the New Empire. There were so many, like, not celebrities, but, like, f- actors. Like, there's, like, 20 actors in um, D- G- King of the Monsters, right? Like, not famous actors, but, like, too many actors, right? And they're all, right. like, people you've seen in other movies, and they all cost money. I couldn't tell you a single person in <laughs> in the new Empire. There was maybe, like, three people, and two of them had already been in the movie before. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't... It wasn't overly humanized, right? There wasn't like this massive sprawling cast of like you have to have the funny guy and you have to have the you know the witty guy and you have to have the scared guy and you have to have the smart lady and then you have the other smart lady. You know what I'm saying? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, I definitely agree. I think I think uh, the monster segments with adam wingard's was very great i I wish michael doherty when he was doing the whole uh king of the monster uh monsters whoopsies 
um, that you were actually getting that interaction with um, the, the exact same thing that was kind of introduced in the show era, because from how Michael was talking, it sounded like that's what we were going to get in the theaters. And, I mean, to a degree, we definitely saw a lot more of the kaiju action as opposed to Garrus. But now after watching Godzilla X Kong, I, I agree that Michael could have done a little bit more in delivering that because all throughout the Godzilla films, you tell me one moment where there's monsters fighting and it's just like most of that entire fight was just focusing on the humans. Um, it rarely happened in the Heisei series, but I mean, that's the closest you've got. Um, so I would like to see more of the action sequence. I think one thing that really ran up the budget despite the actors was also the licensing, getting huge uh, icons such as Rodan, Mothra, and uh, King Ghidorah. Godzilla alone is already expensive, but then you get the three bigger IPs, and then not to mention Godzilla X Kong introducing Mechagodzilla. Oh uh, yeah, they've already yeah they've already ran up the budget as much as they can. Luckily, with Godzilla X Kong being the success that it was. I think it's able to kind of patch those wounds, but I think it's going to be a little bit longer before we ever see another uh, original, I mean, not original, um, Toho Kaiju appearing in the MonsterVerse. At especially least if Kong with, is its, there, with its name. Especially with Kong, because I, I think that just drives, like you said, drives up the cost. I do right. have a question for you. I have a meme that I put up on the screen, which you cannot see, but I'm sure you are aware of this. You have two you have You have two choices you have to make. You either pick one or two. In King of the Monsters, was Godzilla one wearing enormous platform shoes as he floated in the ocean and stood on stood on the water and and breathed up in the air, or was he Godzilla King of Legs? Your your choice, number one or number Man. two. Which which meme is your favorite? I like King of Legs, obviously. Obviously, he's the King, he's the king, of, of, king, of, king of everything, my friend. I just think that's one of my favorite. Like Godzilla memes of probably all time. <laughs> He's the king of legs. I was about to legs. say, that's in every single Godzilla movie known to man. Like, there's moments where Godzilla's walking and he shouldn't be walking <laughs> in the water uh, depths that he's in. Uh, no, that's definitely funny. I think, yeah, I think I've seen that meme once or twice going across Instagram. Yeah, I just, I saw it and I, I saw the scene and I instantly thought of the meme and I was like, ah, yes, the king of legs. <laughs> I just gotta. King of legs. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's just one of those things that I think is, is pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, on second, like when I watched the movie in the theater, I was kind of disappointed. But then upon watching it, like, at least I think I've seen it three times at this point. I was like, oh, no, this isn't. So I mean, the human parts were a little bit of a slog to get through. And some of the overacting was like a little irritating. But then I was like, it's not any worse than any other Toho movie. Like, but from the Showa era or even like the millennial era, like, whatever. There's always like a kind of annoying human stuff, except in Godzilla Minus One, where I thought they did it almost perfectly. That's that's the one that that still I think kind of balances that fine edge of enough Godzilla and enough human drama to to keep you going. I like Shin Godzilla too, but I can understand why people don't don't necessarily get that one yeah. as much. But I I definitely like the beginning segment of how they build up Shin Gojira, but that whole segment after Shin Gojira uses his breath is just going. Skip. Okay, right back to the kaiju action. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, yeah. Well, I think I like it as a, a like a comment. It is a lot, but I hmm. think it's an interesting commentary on like Japanese culture. So minus one, I think for me was well, Final Wars was the first, but minus one for me is the peak of human interaction with the God, uh, with Godzilla. There is no other movie that I've ever ever watched where human and kaiju interactions have ever been useful we'll put it that way it's like minus it's closely one really intertwined right that level yeah, yeah um where he was like past that yeah no yeah i it, it just worked on so many levels like as an allegory and then as like an actual physical thing that they had to overcome and the force mm. of nature stuff like all it, you know all of it so well you wanted to talk about the writer we can go back to that because that is a big that could be a big problem for everybody um this dude shouldn't be i don't know if he could if he can write cereal boxes let alone write a godzilla movie i mean 
He's not as bad okay. as the Marvel guy I was complaining about. Yeah, no, no, no. So I think the guy is Dave Callahan or Callaham. Yep. Is it Callaham or Ham? Callaham. Ham. Okay. So it's Dave Callaham. So according to Dangerville, he used to he was the original writer for the 2014 Godzilla script before Gareth took it over. Um so I have a good feeling he knows about Godzilla. And to his credit, he knows how to show a good monster fight. I did watch Shang-Chi, but the 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 ending fight was phenomenal, I would say my best. Like, I mean, it, out of that entire year of if it wasn't for Spider-Man No Way Home, um I would have had to have said that uh the CGI in in, in that movie was pretty good. Uh, the dragon, beautifully done. I, I really loved every single detail that was spotted uh, in the design. Uh, and the fight was really intriguing, to say the least. But the writing on... Yes. And, on the, and I the mean, I like all the things you said you like. He had nothing to do with other than he probably wrote on a page like, Shang-Chi and Shang-Dad fight giant dragon. Oh. <laughs> And they, oh, you know, thought, all the classic the people had some, some like involvement with the storyboard fighting uh, segment, um, I, which that for the most part, I, I give credit to that, but I don't know if that's actually true or not. I, I just, from how I do my stories, I have my writers do the storyboard with it. Um, but that may not be the same case in that scenario. Uh, but Wonder Woman 84, also not so good. Ooh, I, I mean, there was there were moments, no good. I will say. Yeah, I, there were there were a couple moments. I think uh, the for, mall for the scene is part. fine. I like that. That's kind of fun, right? She's fighting in the mall. I'm okay with that. that. I know this one will be a very unpopular opinion, but um, uh, I forgot the name, but it's basically Wonder Woman's nemesis, uh, the Catwoman, uh, Lady Cheetah. Tiger. What? Yeah, mm-hmm. Cheetah. I didn't like her overall design, but her character. I think was all right for the most part. I wouldn't say she was necessarily a headache as much as the other villain. Um, the I, I much prefer her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the 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 rich, uh, practically Donald Trump guy. Um, I just want to wish it to a stone and everything come the way I want it. Uh, what a, uh, yeah. Oh my god, Pedro what a Pascal, lady. possibly his worst role. Yeah, bless his heart. Um, but no, no, I I think I think. If they can do away with all the bull crap and just focus on a good Godzilla story, for, forget a, do exactly what Adam said he was going to do. He was going to write a good narrative focusing on Godzilla. Now, here's where it's going to be a challenge. Godzilla is nowhere near calm. He is not a kaiju of emotion for the most part. The, the only relevant emotions he's ever shown is a smile on his face, territorial base, and he was happy to see Mothra. And that was about it. Uh, we <laughs> yeah. don't want. We, I don't want to see Godzilla crying or sniffling now. Dang it! Mm-hmm. He can have a story, but I don't want this sobby baby. He's like, I'm a big man, but on the inside, I have a big old heart. No, that that's not my king of the monster monsters. Dang it! I really got to stop that. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything, I do want this kind of uh, kind of the same story that I saw from when me and my girlfriend we went back and we watched uh, Son of Godzilla. Oh yeah, I just very watched that interesting too. movie. But now that I look at it at a much at, at a more mature age, I look at that movie a lot differently than I did when I was a kid. As a kid, I hated it. Oh really? But yeah, as a kid, I didn't like it mainly because Manila was so ugly to look at. I couldn't very look at the ugly. screen. I actually screamed when I first saw it because I was like, "What the hell was that?" I, I the whole thing yeah, is pretty see. disturbing because I literally just watched that this weekend too and. Uh, yeah, the Kamunga. Like I, I don't even know. Did you like as a kid the giant spider? Did you even realize oh that it like stabs yeah, oh Godzilla in the eye with his proboscis thing? And then the Kamakras are pretty gnarly. Just his whole awakening gnarly. scene. Yeah, no, that entire thing was like arachnophobia. If you didn't have arachnophobia at the beginning of the movie, you definitely had it at the end of the movie. Um, the fact, like his whole movement and everything, like it, it makes your body crawl because you're just like sitting there imagining that crawling on you and you're just like no 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 thank you it doesn't feel so good um but 
how they did Godzilla is a good focal point that I liked. He was a dad. He was stern. He was demanding, but he was he was heartwarming when the when the time needed it to be heartwarming. And it was only one moment. And when he's spoiler alert, uh, and where he's hugging Manila at the end, trying to keep him warm. But past that, he wasn't giving Manila any leisure. He he was being rough and stern with him. I'm I think there's fine actually fine with that as Godzilla. There's two cuts of that movie too. There's there's actually one cut from what i understand of where godzilla just walks away from manila at the very end and then i remember hearing that i was like yeah. i would be like that's pretty wow, tough you're gonna be this father figure and then you're just gonna arm and absentee dad just send so. the checks in the mail son and then uh but i do prefer them like hibernating together that is my preferred mm-hmm. ending of the movie that's a weird movie but i do enjoy it i, I i'm i'm I, the message I by the end of the film, especially for a more mature audience, will resonate with it more, especially with you being a dad. I mean, that that has to like have some kind of impact mm-hmm. because it, it's kind of like that's your connection to Godzilla is the fact of him being a father just like you. Um, while I myself don't have any kids, the closest thing I have is my dog. Mm. But I can resonate just a tiny bit like that. Who within doesn't there. have fur babies, right? Yeah, it does not have fur babies. No, I mean, every, who, who sh- people should have fur babies, right? The uh, the other thing that he wrote, by the way, uh, is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which I think is the second one, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's definitely not as impressive as the first one, at least for me. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't bad. I mean, I, I still enjoyed it. Like that, I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it that much. I like the first one better. The second one, I just felt like it was kind of empty because it's kind of a setup for the for the third movie, which I thought. Well, it's was because similar. they didn't listen to Kingpin. Because it's not about the money, Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not about the money. <laughs> and then I, I don't. He wrote the Mortal Kombat movie, which. I feel like people sort of liked it, but I'm also thinking like I don't. They made didn't they make a completely original character for that story, and it was very I can't remember, confusing. Actually, I Mortal feel- Kombat for me was a movie that I could watch as a popcorn flip, but for, probably forget about it the next day because um, I don't remember all too much other than the Scorpion fight. I with remember Sub-Zero. Scorpion and Sub Zero. Yeah, and then the I like ex- Scorpion in it. Like Expendables. That was about it. I'm gonna. Ooh. Although I don't think if he wrote Expendables four, I don't know that you can blame him for that one because not that I even seen it, but my uh, my co-host you, he did see it and he he said it it seemed like it was a movie that got redone halfway through because I know there were fights between Stallone and his contract and like Terry Crews and all the other Expendable people. So, right. you know, I was actually, that's funny that you brought that up because at first I was blanking on what you're talking about, but then I remember St- uh, uh, Stallone in it and I go, oh, Expendables, that movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Those crazy. So, I mean. You said the fourth entry. Yeah. That one was a flop. He's not as bad. Like, like, like I said, the, uh, they just, to, hi- to write the X-Men movie, they just hired the person who wrote Assassin's Creed like 10 years ago. And that movie is one of the worst video game adaptations I think I've I've ever slept through because I couldn't even make it through the movie. It's so boring. And uh, so at least this guy's got more chops than that guy. So I th- I think he can make a perfectly fine movie. Let's put it that way. I think that's I, where... Yeah. I, I it, it all really comes down to the director uh, for me. Mm-hmm. I don't have a huge issue with Callahan. But his, as of his recent career, not too excited. And I guess, um, you know, he might have been forced to put Aquafina in the movie. Like, if you're, oh God. you know what I mean? Like, what do you do with Aquafina? Like, really? Right. Oh, just just call her Aquanaga. Yeah. Because I mean, she's oh my mean. gosh. I can't enjoy one role that she's in. Like, somebody did a, uh, if if um, Kaiju were voiced by uh, voice actors, and then one person put for Mothra Aqua Fam, like, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. Oh my gosh, please don't do Mothra. <laughs> do anything else, but not Mothra. That that needs to have like some kind of divine, holy, beautiful voice. Yes. Not sitting there blabbering voice that just makes huh? you want to go. Huh? <laughs> this sounds like the penguin <laughs> to me. Uh so speaking of like 
that kind of like you know spinoff type stuff. Let's let's move on to Monarch a little bit. Now I don't. Did you did you watch this show at all? I watched the first two episodes. We don't have anything Apple related, um, yeah. so we we were really surprised that Monarch. Because I thought Legendary had something going on with Warner Bros, so you would think that they'd air it on HBO. I would have thought so, um, too. Or at no, least like Netflix might buy it. I don't know. Yeah, or even Netflix. But Apple TV, I didn't even know it existed um, prior to the, the announcement of uh, Monarch. So I was really disappointed that I had to pay a subscription for a whole new service. So I instead didn't. Uh, end up doing it past the first two episodes because it said it would release every Friday. And by the time uh, yeah. we had gotten Apple TV, we were only going to be able to see the first three entries uh, to the film. From what I've heard, it is not a disappointment, but it's a young-sified version of the Monarch team. I heard it's um, uh, it's like a mixed bag. Like I heard some episodes yeah. are good and then some episodes are like real bad. And it's kind of ends up somewhere in the middle, but the final couple episodes seem to make it worth it for people is what I've heard. But I, I, I get that a lot for a lot of streaming service movies. Like, like the beginning and middle part is just nothing grand. Yeah. But the last two is, is like the, the punching bag. And I mean, I like, uh, um, Kurt Russell and his kid is in it. So, I mean, I would be willing to watch it if it were on a service that I had, but since yeah. I don't have it, I was hoping I could just wait. But now it's been renewed for season two. So yeah. maybe we won't get to see it because they're really going to want to pitch season one. I wonder if it's like mm -hmm. the one of the bigger hits they've had on Apple TV because you really it, it don't is. hear fact, anything. Um, yeah, I was actually watching a game theory, uh, well, actually film theory video, and according to his charts, Apple TV's most successful stream or the most streamed, uh, the most streamed thing on the platform was Monarch. Okay. So that's the reason why it got the next entry, which may be a smart move on Legendary's part with the fact Apple TV doesn't really have much going for him. Like I said, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. Um, that may have shed some light on the subject. While it got the success, it should, I, I think, while it got the success, from the first entry now that people know what to expect from monarch will they really be going back in there for a season two because there's this other one that's rumored uh coming around the bend that you may have heard of it's actually an anime uh called g team okay i know anything heard, about no that? i haven't heard anything about that okay so it's, uh, it's it's going to be in the works it's in the works right now it's been it's been in uh production ever since michael doherty's uh exit to the monsterverse back in king of the mob uh, monsters mm -hmm. um and it's being written by o'shea jackson jr and it's going to be focusing on that little crew that we saw in the in the mix and that would be a good opportunity opportunity to start focusing on other kaiju but they did say that this is non-canonical okay so that part is okay but i trust o'shea jackson jr i trust michael doherty and from what images we have in which you can look into it afterwards it's very promising they already have plans for the first two kaiju and for the most part it's done it just needs to be greenlit okay um but they already got Gigan secured and Biolante. Oh, uh, so that so that's pretty good. If even Toho is looking at it and going, okay, this has promise to it. That's interesting. I'm also curious if they're going to do a sequel to uh, Godzilla. What is it? Singular Point or what was that one called? The one oh on yeah, no Singular Point. Yeah, no. I, I wish they would do something with that. I don't know why they haven't done it. Actually, I know it was a success. Um, you got to remember in anime. Uh, it's real hard. Like even the top top shows have trouble getting their stuff made. Like you basically have to be in the top five shows of all time to even get new like seasons made. And some yeah. of them have to agree to do um, non hand drawn. Like you have to agree to do CGI animation. Like uh, Demon Slayer is is like the number one anime of all time. I think and. And they've been able to push those out. But I know like One Punch Man, which was really, really popular, came out like season one came out like eight years ago and they 
they did season two like it takes like four to five years just to do one season because there's such a backlog and there's not as mm. many studios as you would think and the top top studios are just backlogged with stuff so you just never know you know what i mean there's such a demand for it that you just never know what you're gonna get and uh that and that's the biggest problem is, is just getting a studio to even do it is is tricky because like i know one punch man mm. had to leave theirs attack on titan which is like a, a huge show um they had to give up their their original animation studio because they just couldn't do it they didn't have the time to do it and they're like we cannot wait 10 years to get this done and i think that whole thing even took 10 years to like release all of attack on titan it's like four seasons who can wait 10 years for something like you know, so I think that's part of the problem. GTA with fans, it. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's they, those fans do have to wait. Um, yeah, the other thing I heard is there's a rumor that Kong. Oh, they didn't. Uh, this is a spoiler for Apple TV. Do you want a spoiler for Monarch season one? I I don't know if I should tell everybody. It's on the screen. I I might as well because maybe it'll get people to watch. I was about it to say it's on the screen because more people. Well, I didn't know it was going to be there. It just magically showed up. <laughs> I had no. I didn't read this article ahead of time. Whoops. Where well, I didn't read the article. No, I I just looked at it for the pictures. Uh, Kong surprise season one fin- final finale com- cameo sets audience expectations that I guess Kong's going to be part of it. What in the world was Kong doing in season one? Oh my gosh. So there's some sort of like Kong is going to return in season two. So they're saying that it's there. There's a possibility of, of continue to work with Kong. So I think I guess that's kind of interesting. Apparently Godzilla does show up in the show. I I don't know. Oh yeah, no, he does. Okay, I had heard it wasn't very much, but again, I think that it was ten yeah, no. episodes. So who knows what in the world was in that show. Yeah, no, so so if you think about it this way, Monarch Monarch is going to be very focused on the people kind of driven thing, which there are some fans in the Godzilla fandom who who prefer to focus more on a human story. Like they, they want that Godzilla minus one kind of narrative. Mm-hmm. And I think after the success that minus one had, it gives uh, audiences more faith that human interaction with Kaiju can be possible. The only problem with the only difference between minus one and um monarch is mainly science that's why i think singular point didn't do so well is because of all the science that had to be put into it and it's just like the first scientific evidence of godzilla is simply just atom bomb dinosaur boom yeah now everything is kind of evolving into like now you have to you have to explain how hydrogen works now you have to explain how molecules can be separated apart from each other now you have to go into talk about this that and the other in which it's not a new thing in godzilla but oh my gosh it feels like it's evolving with you you might as well try to en- enroll in being a scientist by the end of your kaiju career or something like that singular point was definitely um, tricky to understand oh what my the world gosh. was going on there i'm, I'm still not 100 percent sure what happened in that i mean i liked it but i still don't necessarily understand it uh, me neither and i don't think i think some kind of physicist had to be there to write the script when that thing was happening yeah. uh no because i don't think anybody kept track with it unless you had some kind of doctorate degree in, in that specific category um so I, I wish they would really back it back down because i mean let's face it why are you trying to put science in lizard punching monkey yeah i mean hell you'd think iron man would have more science involved in it than godzilla no 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 godzilla goes way into depth with it and i think the entire monster verse tries to do it way too over the top um godzilla x kong i think was the first time they talked about science and I understood every bit of it. Um, past that, I mean, they do have like flying spaceship things, and and you know they talked a little bit too much about theories of Hollow Earth. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. We can accept the idea that there's like big holes underground. It's okay. Like we don't have <laughs> to get crazy with this. We it. don't have you know don't have to get too crazy <laughs> with this. Yeah. So uh, overall, are you uh, are you excited for this stuff, or are you 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 like waiting to hold judgment? How do you feel? I, I think I'd have to say waiting to hold judgment. Um, I'm, I'm hearing with the re- with the fact that they released uh, Godzilla X Kong on digitally, 
uh, box office numbers are going to start dropping, which I really do question why they would release the digital copy only a month after initial release. Hollywood needs to stop doing that. It's killing everything. They really need to stop doing it. Um, I would have at least waited till midsummer to start releasing uh, digital copies, but I know Godzilla X Kong, they made their money. Uh, they definitely made it. And I mean, just, uh, the $566 million alone was just from, um, was just simply from the movie theaters. Yeah, just like, that's not, yeah, that's not even talking about the merchandising that it made that, that alone had to put it up even higher. Um, in terms of money making, um, so I, I know the MonsterVerse ha- has a good standing where they are now. It's way so better than it was era. like a couple years ago. So yes, I will agree with that. Um, and, and I mean, if you think about it, if this goes in the same direction as most movies do, this might go through the show of phase where we're going to start having some of the more not favored movies coming through but that doesn't mean that the king of the Mon- monsters will not again be recognized i mean if anything were to would happen we still do have what's going on over at uh, over there at toho studios they're they're making the next sequel to godzilla uh, minus one so that's awesome i want to see the direction that they're going in and i mean toho getting back into the ring of it might pose some competition not huge but if the monster versus doesn't do their best to kind of stand good with their audiences they're not going to be able to keep them for much longer because i have a good feeling toho ain't going to be letting us down anytime soon yeah and i, I think except with pull, video games they'll pull the rights if they feel like they're not being taken care of properly. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, I trust that every every step that most the monsterverse takes toho is watching them with a careful eye I mean, we already know what happened back in the 1990s. So I don't think Toho is going to let that happen again. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I think that, uh, that's, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's in a decent spot. So you, we're getting more Godzilla stuff than I think I've ever seen in my lifetime. So that's a, that's a plus. I'll take it any, any day of the week, right? And the Godzilla I say, I mean, USA when I was growing show. Up, I was getting nothing, so I'm yeah. perfectly fine with what's going on now. Exactly, and uh, hopefully we get to see that Apple TV stuff. That that would be the thing I would like to see. And stop offering me like two months because I can't <laughs> watch anything. And you know, like I can't. That's ten weeks. That's more than than I can afford. So um, why don't you let every besides like and subscribe to both of our channels here? But we'll put links up here for for Giga Blast though too as well. Tell the people out there what kind of projects you got going on. Anything you're cooking or anything they should go back and watch? So I am actually in the process of uh, finishing off a series of mine that me and my studio have been working on ever since uh, the beginning of 2017. Um, We're starting to wrap things up with that entry and opening up to its next chapter. But one of my more favored projects that I have going for us right now is me and my... uh, some of my uh, co-directors that I've worked with in the past, we're going to actually be working on getting animations going along with some comic book writing. We want to do our own little kind of take a step outside of Minecraft and start dwelling into more realistic kind of uh, departments of entertainment, such as animations, comic books, and things like that. And we're also working on developing mods uh, that will also help reach out and a generation and a younger audience of potential Godzilla fans. Nice. Um, but if you definitely want to go check that kind of stuff out and kind of support the channel, give some feedback, some recognition uh, from it, some ideas, uh, there will be happily a community tab over there in which I'll be releasing teasers, following up with the little comic book series that me and my girlfriend are hopefully going to release uh, in, in the near time future. But that is probably about it for me. Awesome. Well, I look forward to that and we'll, We'll keep these going as whenever uh, we try to do these, I guess, like once every two weeks. So check out our monster cast, I guess we're calling it for now. We'll see where it all goes. It's all about you guys. It's all about the fans. If you give us comments and let us know what you think down below, give us some ideas, some topics you want to talk about. Was there anything you we said that you don't like? Because I could take it. And I know Giga Blast is a Giga Chad, so he could take it too. So <laughs> let us know what you think. But uh, we are, we're done. We're on to the next one.
rolling.